the pre-pogol exercise PG3, we're going to be talking about acids and bases. So you basically have three learning objectives in this activity. Uh, one, you'll need to be able to um, label acids and bases, conjugate acids, and conjugate bases. So we'll talk about how to find them and label them in an acid-base reaction. The second learning objective would be able to assign pKa values to your acid and your conjugate acid. And then the third learning objective is to determine the direction of your equilibrium arrow. And I will show you how to do this based on your pKa values. Equilibrium values or arrows go like this, the double-headed arrows. Okay. So let's start off with talking about the difference between a Bronsted Lowry acid and a base versus a Lewis acid and a base. So in a Bronsted Lowry acid, um, your acid donates a proton and your base will accept a proton. Now for Lewis acids and bases, there's not a proton available. So your Lewis acid will accept electron pair and then your base will then donate electron pair. So if you have a reaction such as acetic acid, which is the active ingredient in vinegar, and you react this with, let's say, um, Mr. Clean ammonia. Okay, so there's your ammonia. Now, the first thing you'd want to do is find your acidic proton. Now you see that there's hydrogens here, and there's hydrogens there, and there's hydrogens here. This is probably the hardest part of um, doing acid-base chemistry. So you need to recognize that this is a functional group. It's a carboxylic acid, and carboxylic acids have acidic protons there. Okay. Uh, your nitrogens, this is an amine, this is a functional group. This is why we learn functional groups in organic chemistry. It's like classifying um, trees from dogs and birds from cats. Uh, you did this when you were three and you have to categorize these different um, things. And that's what you do with organic chemistry. So you need that vocabulary. This is a carboxylic acid and therefore this is an acidic proton. These are your amines. These are bases. So they're organic bases. So the sooner you start learning your functional groups, this will be easier. So these are your organic acids. If I asked you to name some acids, you'd probably say, oh, sulfuric acid. Or you might say hydrochloric acid. These do not have carbon. These are called inorganic acids and you've had some uh, general chemistry, so you can recognize those. If I asked you to name some bases, you'd probably say, oh, that's sodium hydroxide, right? That's an inorganic base because there's no carbon. Even though there's not a carbon in the nitrogens, nitrogens are considered organic bases. Okay, so here we have an acid. Now, this is a Bronsted-Lowry. We'll call it BL, Bronsted-Lowry acid 
because it's going to donate that proton. Okay, it's going to donate that proton. And this would be your Bronsted-Lowry base because these electrons are going to come and take that proton away. Those electrons will go to oxygen and then your product and your reaction flask becomes this. So this is basically your first reaction you've done in um, our class. So there's your hydrogen. That's your acid. And these electrons go there. And there is your hydrogen. Okay. And then the formal charges um, overall are neutral. Now we will show you how to determine the equilibrium based on pK values and you'll see that that goes to the product. Okay, so those are Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. Now, what happened though, Lewis was like, well, can we have an acid-base reaction without a proton? Without the transfer of a proton? And the answer is yes. So, in the Lewis acid and bases, this would be an example. Um, a lot of your trivalent uh, metals like aluminum, aluminum trichloride, boron trichloride, these are your Lewis acids. And the reason why, they have an unhybridized p orbital, they can accept a uh, lone pair. So basically, these electrons from chlorine go and donate to the aluminum, the unhybridized p and then it can form a bond such as this and this becomes a um, let's raise that um, this becomes a negative with aluminum's formal charge uh, 3 minus 4 is negative 1 that becomes a negative. Chlorine becomes a plus. Let's do the formal charge of chlorine. Um, chlorine is group 7 minus um, 4 dots and 2 lines. So that's a plus 1. Overall neutral. And as you can see that this is the predicted product and this would be a Lewis acid because it accepts these lone pairs. And this would be a Lewis base because it donates. Okay, another learning objective is to assign pKa values. So we want to assign pKa values. And you can go back and review what a pKa value um, is the negative log of the k value. Um, and I'm going to show you what's important about your pKa values. Um, you will need to have these pretty much memorized by Thanksgiving. So, but you'll get used to using them. So you got let's list a few HBr, HCl. These are your inorganic acids. Okay, you just need to know that they have a pKa value of less than zero. That's how you memorize them. You don't have to memorize everything. Um, you have organic acids. We've talked about the acidic acid here. This is your acidic proton. This is the carboxylic acid functional group. And that has a pKa of between four and five. And then you have water. Water has a pKa of 15.7. And this is usually the turning point to things that are not acidic. So ammonia, I've told you that the nitrogens are typically your organic bases. Okay, so they're going to have like really high pKa's, 33. And then methane uh, essentially would not ever act as an acid, and that's 50. You also need to be able to write what your conjugate base would be for these. So 
basically you take away the proton. So Br minus, Cl minus, these are your conjugate acids. This would be CH3, CO2 minus. You're going to have to be able to do this because these are going to be your products of your acids when you're drawing your reactions. Water, OH minus is your conjugate acid uh, base. Ammonia, just take away that proton. And then for methane, that would be your conjugate base. Okay, so one of your um, goals would be to, let's just go ahead and start um, showing you how these work. So you want to be able to predict the products and the direction. of the equilibrium arrows for an acid-base reaction. Let me give you the steps we're going to do this. Step number one, you're going to have to draw your reaction by uh, reaction products by first locating your acidic proton and then you'll want to label the acid so you want to second once you locate this acidic proton then you will want to label the acid the base these are always going to be on your reactant side and your conjugate acid and your conjugate base. And sometimes I just write CB and CA. These are always going to be on your product side. And then step number three, you're going to assign pK values. So we're going to have to look at that chart that we just used that you wrote down to, and you just do it to the acid and the conjugate acid, okay? So you're only going to assign two pKa values and then you're going to um, draw the direction of the equilibrium arrow towards your higher pKa value. So if they're about equal, then it'll be like that. If the two pKa values on the acid and the conjugate acid are equal. If, it, if it's higher on your product side, it'll be like this. If it's higher on the reactant side, the equal va equilibrium value lies like that. Okay, so let's try an example. Okay, so we're going to do our acetic acid again and we're going to react this with some base. I'm going to put in my lone pairs. These are my Lewis structures. Um, so the first thing I need to do is locate my acid. Well this is um, a carboxylic acid and this is the acidic proton. This is an inorganic base. Okay, so and then I'm going to draw in these lone pairs are going to take away that proton. So this is obviously, and then those electrons are going to go back to the oxygen. So this is a um, Bronsted Lowry acid, and this would be a Bronsted Lowry base. And then I draw the conjugate acid, CA, or I'm sorry, we'll draw the conjugate base first, CB, conjugate base. So this is the acid minus 
the acidic proton, and then we're going to draw the conjugate acid, and that would be with this hydrogen here. So our product, if we mix carboxylic acid, so uh, vinegar, acetic acid, with something like sodium hydroxide, you're not going to just get OH off the shelf, okay? So it's going to have to have a counter ion. Then you would end up getting um, acetate, which would actually be sodium acetate and water, okay? So what is the late equilibrium lie? This is where you need your pKa value. Remember, you assign your pKa value to your acid and your conjugate acid. So what was the pKa value of this? Uh, remember we said pKa value is between 4 and 5. And then what's the pKa value of water? 15.7. So which one's larger? Yes, 15.7. So your equilibrium value um, is going towards the 15.7. And so this is your equilibrium values. And you can see that if you mix this together after a few minutes, this would be the majority of your product, probably greater than 99% because of the equilibrium value. For your exercise, your um, pre-pogal activity due tomorrow, I need you to um, define the acid base conjugate acid conjugate base for the um, following two I'll give you two reactions okay remember the acid and base are on the reactant side and the conjugate acid and base you're gonna have to draw these you're gonna have to predict these and this is on the product side. So that's one thing you need to do. And then after you do that, then you need to assign pKa values to your acid and your conjugate acid. And then the last thing you need to do is draw the equilibrium arrows um, towards the higher pKa value, aka this is your weaker acid. The equilibrium lies towards the weaker acid. What two reactions? All right, the two reactions are the following. So um, let's do your acetic acid again. Make sure you draw your lone pairs and your correct Lewis structure. Okay, so that's reaction number one. And the reaction number two, so this is your acidic proton, I'll just go ahead and tell you. And then you react that with sodium hydroxide. When you see something like that, you want to just go ahead and write sodium. Anytime you get a, a metal, write the positive, and then give your oxygen the negative there. Okay, so try to do one, two, three for tomorrow.